Hello and welcome to class number 10 of the UPSC Mains Answer Writing Initiative. I hope all of you have been taking advantage of this and trying to write as many answers as possible. This is a series in which we try to decode previous year questions from the UPSC, try and see how to write their answers and also give you homework to make you practice about how to write answers in the mains examination. <clears throat> the PDF of all these lectures is available on our Telegram channel. Please join using the link in the description of this video. In the very first class of this series, as you know, we had discussed about the structure of the answers. Usually, how do you write an introduction? Then how do you write the connecting line, come to main body and the concluding argument part? All of that was discussed in class number one of this series. If you have not watched it, please do go ahead and watch that. You go to description of the video, you will find the link of the entire playlist of this series where all the videos are numbered. Go to the first video and you will be able to see our discussion about the structure of the answer. Once you have done that, you can come back and then we will try and answer a question here that UPSC had asked in 2023. <clears throat> this is a question we have taken up from GS1. From GS1, this question is from Indian Society. Now from Indian Society, every single year you have usually about two questions. In some years it may go up to three, but usually you have two questions from Indian Society. And question from Indian society are usually, for example, like, uh, let's say, suicide, family values. There was also a question uh, about the lockdown, the COVID lockdown, the work from home concept. So the questions in Indian society are very interesting in the sense that you don't require any example or any fact from the reports to give an example here. So if you are afraid or if you are scared of those questions where you have to give a lot of examples, remember many reports, etc. In Indian society, in these kind of questions, especially you don't really have to give a lot of those examples. Rather, you have to focus on what the question is asking. So <clears throat> the question here is, do you think marriage as a sacrament is losing its value in modern India? Now, what is a sacrament? Sacrament basically something that has <clears throat> a divine value means something that is considered very pious, something that is considered very, very important, something that cannot be compromised on that is called sacrament. So the question is, do you think marriage as a sacrament is losing its value in modern India? Now, how do you approach these kind of questions? When the question is about, do you think this is right? Do you think this is wrong? So basically when they're asking your opinion, what do you have to do here is, give opinions on both the sides. So usually what we'll do is in the main body, we will write points about yes, <clears throat> marriage as an institution might be losing its value because of these reasons. And then we'll also write about no, that even today, marriage is still an integral part of Indian society. And there are reasons for that. So whenever you face these kind of questions, which start with do you think this is true? Do you think or do you support this or not? It's good to give both sides of the argument so that you are very clear that or the examiner rather is very clear that you know the entire story of it. So we'll talk about yes, marriage may not be considered as sacrament today as it was earlier. Reasons for example are there used to be a big stigma about divorces, about separating. There were many couples in earlier generation that had reasons to get separated, but they did not get a divorce, did not get separated because of family pressure, societal pressure, etc. They just continue to live together. Now that stigma is going away. You see a lot more people uh, looking after themselves. And if they think that they're not in a healthy relationship, then coming out of that relationship. There are other reasons as well. Influence from the Western culture has increased considerably. Then women are much more financially independent now. Earlier, even when a woman thought that she is not in a good relationship, most women did not take this step of coming out of the marriage because they are financially dependent on the male in the family. Now that women are much more financially independent, it also gives them the freedom. It also gives them the courage to chart their own path. So these are some of examples or reasons that you can quote to prove how marriage is not as sacrament as it used to be in our earlier times. And then there are reasons against that, that marriage is still sacrament in many parts of India. It still has religious significance. It is still considered as a bedrock of the entire family. 
so there are reasons on both sides so how do we approach this we'll start with the introduction part in these kind of questions you can't give a fact so basically it's difficult to write the introduction because it's a very generic thing you can't define what is a marriage you can't really define what exactly is uh, the institution of marriage as such so in the introduction we write a very generic argument just expanding on what the question is so in modern times the notion of marriage it has been encountering shifting perspectives since the society is undergoing transformations such as urbanization and globalization <clears throat> institution of marriage also has been facing new challenges so we have given a kind of a primer or a kind of a preface to our main body here to let the examiner know what to expect in the main body because in the main body we will be writing what the challenges that marriage and institution is facing and we'll be writing about how uh marriage in many parts of india is still considered as sacrament so again no fact to mention here you don't have to mention that this is the divorce rate in india that this is the marriage rate in india etc just a very generic introduction now the main body as i said will give arguments on both the sides first side why marriage is facing challenges we discuss about that reduction in stigma around divorce aspirations of the youth earlier someone in the couple women in most cases would compromise on their own personal aspirations for example when a male and a female get married females in most cases would have to compromise on their careers unfortunately and many of them would do that going ahead but with personal aspirations also increasing there are a lot of females who are taking the step that no my personal aspirations are as important as the male in the family so those things are also playing a big role there is a growing feeling of individualism individualism means giving priority to an individual giving priority to individual happiness rather than compromising thinking that no i am doing this for the good of my family let me suffer let my family not suffer that was a feeling in the earlier time now that is changing it's more about your individual identity it's more about whether you are individually happy in the relationship or not so there has been a growing increase in the feeling of individualism then there are some alternatives also that are emerging such as live in relationships single parent families are coming up through adoption family structure in india although largely it is still the same but it is changing especially in the urban areas we see a lot more acceptance of live in relationships especially in the metro cities that is also told people that maybe if they don't want to get married there is no reason for them to get married and that is why marriage as an institution has not remained as sacrament or has not remained as pious as it used to be on the other hand we'll write points about why marriage still in many parts of india still very 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 sacrament first it's considered as the base of the entire family see in indian culture family plays a major role in western countries in us etc it's very it's very common you turn 18 you uh, basically finish your school and then you move out of your house in india you only move out of your house if you have to for a job for example if you have to go and study in some other city for example it is almost impossible in india that you move out of your house don't live with your parents while you're living in the same city you only move out of your house away from your parents because you have to shift your city right that is the only reason in western culture that is not true in western culture it's very common you turn 18 or you finish your school then you move out even if you're living in the uh, living in the same city that does not matter so in india marriage is still considered as a basic block of building the family in most parts it's also a very big concept in india of lineage remember when people get married and the a uh, family of the couple that start pressurizing them why don't you have kids why don't you have kids we want to take the family name forward so this concept of family name going forward of lineage of dynasty kind of a thing forming that's also a big big part and that is only possible because of marriage marriage has religious significance also most religions talk about marriage in different forms but all of them give a very high importance to marriage so people still regard this as a very very important part of their lives then we'll conclude by saying that marriage as an institution is diluting in some parts of the country however it is wrong to say 
that it has lost its entire sacrament status. In most parts of the country, especially in the rural areas, it still holds extreme importance. That is how we will conclude this answer. Again, those kind of questions where it's difficult to get data or facts. So you have to dig deep into what you see around you. It's a very generic question. There is no book, etc. that will teach you how to write these answers. You have to just be prepared, seeing all around you and then write from common sense and that would be good enough. Then I have a homework for all of you again from GS1. This is a homework from history. What are the main features of Vedic society and religion? Do you think some of the features are still prevailing in Indian society? Write in 200 words. This was again asked in 2023. I'll be happy to give you a feedback. Send in your answers to this email ID. I've been checking all these answers, giving feedback to all of you. Do hit the subscribe button also. Invite your friends to see other initiatives. We are running the quick revision course for prelims 2024. Do watch that. It's extremely important for prelims examination. Again, join the Telegram group to get the PDF of these lectures. Thank you so much. Jai Hind.